standards and status quo. When and how we classify short speeds and gentlemen for general consumption at the day. This is just an extension of the state's power, ladies and gentlemen, the economics of house and its capability to necessarily regulate what comes out in media. Anyways, we think that when you have shows that are uh, in line with the issue of gender equality and the appreciation of gender equality, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm precise, it has a lot, a lot of good things for the state. For example, we all know, ladies and gentlemen, that society that respects gender equality is more economically progressive at the end because of the bigger middle class and the capability of families, ladies and gentlemen, for income equality at the day. So what does, what do, uh, what's the point of this argument? The point is that there's an inherent interest, ladies and gentlemen, for the state to necessarily promote gender uh, gender equality issues at the day through media, which acknowledges as a, uh, as an influencing platform, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for its citizens at the day. Second argument, no, no more points. Let's talk about the best way, the fastest way to necessarily import and foster gender equality. Because let's take a look at kids nowadays. We think that when you talk about children now, they're visual learners, ladies and gentlemen, and members of us. That's why, as a parent, you always have, have to be very worried, ladies and gentlemen, about what you do in front of your kids because they might imitate it at the day. But at the same time, we are talking about visual learners who spend most of their time, ladies and gentlemen, and members of us, in front of a television at the day. So we think that the narrative and the experience that they're necessarily involved in are those narratives that are mean that, that the media is necessarily portraying right now. For example, in Phineas and Burb, ladies and gentlemen, and members of South, Isabella's story is only relying upon Phineas and Burb's story at the end day. It sends a message to women or children who are women viewers, ladies and gentlemen, that their story as a female is only congruent upon the story of the man at the end day, ladies and gentlemen. It, even Princess Bubblegum in Adventure Time, ladies and gentlemen, and members of South, she's not even there if Phineas and Burb don't necessarily go to her. Uh, She's not necessarily, she's not in the story, now. Finn and Jake doesn't necessarily go to her, ladies and gentlemen, and members of South. What does this mean? We think that the experience you necessarily involve within the children nowadays is one that's men-centric, ladies and gentlemen, and members of South. They don't know about Hillary Clinton, they don't know about Angela Merkel. Those are the experiences that they are exposed to, ladies and gentlemen, and members of South. They're exposed to the status quo experiences that media pollutes their mind with, ladies and gentlemen, and members of South. Without the background, you're just saying how Allowing children or uh, children, ladies and gentlemen, to be exposed only to men centric stories at the end day. We think at worst what happens is you create women who are independent, ladies and gentlemen, and members of staff, and who are relying upon a man's story for their own joyfulness in life at the end day. At the end, what must you consider coming from government side? The question to me is simple. What's the best way necessarily for us to transcend that generational boundaries in order to incorporate uh, gender equality as a value in society? We're very proud of the Watching television or even films that fail the Bechdel test. 
we will further discuss on later on why we think one, this is far, far more beneficial in terms of destroying the patriarchy in general. But before that, a couple of responses. Firstly, he said that the best way for us to destroy patriarchy is to hide patriarchy, ladies and gentlemen, in the minds of children. We think that it's not how, how we actually conduct these shows in the first place. Although initially, fine, a character might be so obsessed, ladies and gentlemen, a female character might be obsessed with a man eventually, but even with TV shows right now for children, we deconstruct that idea where right? parents would step in and say that falling in love with a man is not the only cause of happiness <laughs> for women, ladies and gentlemen, and members of this house. So we actually show them the weakness currently of the feminist movement and correct them by showing, ladies and gentlemen, gender stereotypical shows within society. That's why we think it's even ineffective for his side. But secondly, and it will further be responded within my speech, when we think that government regulation, although we could see to a certain extent, but doesn't really consent to tangible harms within society. Because the only thing that we classify, for example, are violence, rape, for example, or excessive violence that might actually be, ladies and gentlemen, copied by children. So they were not able to fulfill their burden as to tangible harms that they trans within society, ladies and gentlemen. And is this the only way by which we can fight patriarchy by censoring, censoring, ladies and gentlemen, these typical shows and not showing them to children? Before we have to adapt to the proposal. The proposal yeah. says that we're, not just, we're just not going to classify them for general patronage. But secondly, if you admit to parents are an avenue, what's, what's the world about having an adult to do it? Isn't it better if all social institutions yeah. work for the same value? Yeah. 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 We, we could see that certain social, uh, social institutions will work for that value, but we question the legitimacy as to the extent by which it works different social institutions to fight the government's battle. The first idea is this. Why we think that added government regulation to the media is counterproductive to an open and active media entity. Because what happens in their model is you only focus on the gentlemen as to the amount of audience that that particular movie or show will be shown into society. Why is this harmful? Because to a certain extent, it may be true that we censor certain types of shows or television or, or films because it has tangible hearts within society. And we say that these particular shows do not really affect and show such great harm within society as to really limit the amount of creative this, uh, creativity that we allow the directors or even story writers to have. Because if under your model, if they want to be shown to the gender of uh, patronage, then they have to rewrite the entire story, ladies and gentlemen, in members of this house. The sex in the city will have to be rewritten entirely, ladies and gentlemen. Or even Frozen, for example, when Hannah and Elsa talked in the first place about a man, ladies and gentlemen. What is the point? Because the role of the media, to a certain extent, they are an enterprise, they are for profit. So, they want to actually adapt to the viewership, the everyday interaction by which their viewers actually reflect within society. So, unless there is an active or intent to harm by the screen writers, ladies and gentlemen, to harm the feminist movement in general, then why should we even limit to the amount of creativity that they can actually show? So, a self-correcting media for this side of the house is harmful to a lot of things in general. Because media, ladies and gentlemen, are carriers of other values within society as well. Like Name is it up, for example, where we showed my team to be obsessed with the father of Cosette, ladies and gentlemen. Although that might be harmful to a certain extent, but if we do not allow general patronage of that film, which is again a discourse on poverty, for example, for reflect to those who are actually poor, then these particular values are shown up to the society and not exposed to these values that we deny society to be a consumer of that film that carries these particular values as well. So the conclusion of this argument is simple. The uncensored media has always been about discursive creation of storyline which are essential for other values to also be existed in society. But the second question is far more important. Does it forward the interest of the feminist movement? The first argument is this that there is no specific strand of feminism that we have to offer within society. So government regulation on this particular point is that if you are a woman and you only talk about man, a man, for example, in your life, that is already disempowering. When in fact, on the perspective of the woman, that might not be disempowering. 
and it's only a subjective perspective on the part of that state that that is harmful for women to talk about men. So, you stifle ladies and gentlemen the entire spectrum of what we have in society regarding feminism and only offer one specific type of empowerment for women if you do not talk about men, ladies and gentlemen. So even within this side of the house, they harm the entire spectrum. But secondly, we think that highly the patriarchy will not destroy patriarchy, right? Because it concerns ladies and gentlemen as a constant reminder of the existing problem that we have within society, that films are a reflection of social conditions, that the patriarchy is still existent, the gender stereotype is still apparent within society, ladies and gentlemen. So in their model, they create a false victory for the feminist movement that they have been victorious within society, when in fact films are reflective of what is really happening on the ground. So there is a false victory that the patriarchy has been defeated, that women are not any more stereotyped, ladies and gentlemen. So in summation, what do we believe in again in opposition bench? We think you allow the patriarchy to exist because it's not only about feminism that shows actually have. They also offer other values that society will benefit from. But secondly, there is no specific stand of feminism that we have before in society. But more importantly, hiding the patriarchy is not an effective way of fighting patriarchy, but rather exposing patriarchy and fighting it within the field. That is the best way to do it. and 
wouldn't really talk about a lot of interests, then that's something that we send to young girls. But more importantly, it's very damaging for boys because that's the theory that they will grow up with, right? But more importantly, last rebuttal, we're have Carlos Beach, come from Carlos Beach, and told us that we're having a bias for a certain strand of feminism. Please tell us what certain strand of feminism that is. Because the only way we want, the only thing we want here coming from the government is a equal exposure and an equal portrayal of women. And for example, tell them that women are not just talking about romantic interests. Women, for example, can also fight and go out well outside central characters. It can even be central characters if all the central characters are men, right? In Power Rangers Mighty Morphin, for example, the only girl there in a male dominated cast is the big ranger and the, uh, the, the yellow ranger, right? But they also have one that, but their exposure is limited to discussions about their love interests because the Power Rangers and their discussions are completely completely diluted by the men cast of that Power Rangers, right? So in, in terms of racial, they're completely underrepresented when it comes to that in the media. That's what we want, an equal racial and portrayal in media shows, especially for children, if you could see that children are visual learners. So I'm going to tell you why this is a legitimate extension of state authority, but this will be unintended consequences of showing children that shows um, shows that uh, revolve around them. But before I go ahead. The Power Rangers are five, so either way, one gender will be but if the heart is so big enough in your size, why are you not willing to buy these children's shows? Because right here, uh, you're arguing for example, you have to understand that the Bechdel test is not just about representation, but also about the content of the show. You have to understand that the content must be regulated, and that women cannot be portrayed as one-dimensional, cannot be portrayed as mere accessories, cannot be portrayed as mere love interest of the main character. So that's the thing you're missing about the policy. The Bechdel test mandates that women have the equal screen time, or at least have some screen time at all. We have shows like Lord, Work of Empire, or Mad Men, which is revolving around central male characters and completely invisibilize women, especially in the background. They don't talk about other topics except topics that concern them. And the goal of this uh, Bechdel test is to have women work equally, to show that women are not one dimensional characters and they're not just accessories to male needs. And they, have, they, must, they must have a niche, a place in the show itself, independent from male characters, or their, uh, independent from their lives, right? That's why we give general patent rating or general audience rating to shows that, that are especially for children that don't have violence, that don't have sexual content, because we believe that those ideals that these shows foster are actually desirable for children. If we consider the value of gender equality, treating women the same as men is a desirable value, then we must also impose the same standard to shows, right? Because we do not send the, uh, the that kind of message, especially if we call this kind of hypocrisy in the media. Why is this a legitimate extension of state authority? This runs on the premise that the status quo already regulates media in the first place. We also have to go against that principle because the state already does and actually concede to that principle. The content, for instance, especially for violence and sexually explicit, even separate messages, are filtered by the state because it concedes that even adults, especially, especially children, ladies and gentlemen, are easily influenced by this. There's already that consensus. For the, um, for the following theories, for example, the lunch theory or the near exposure theory, that exposure to these kinds of values actually affect your behavior not just when you're young, but even when you grow up because it forms yes. a foundation of your moral values yes. and how you see other people wait until I go to my substance. Yes. The substance is simple. TV shows that do not act or pass the medical test always portray men as heterosexual characters. If there are women, they're portrayed the psychic or the love interest. This goes against the value of gender equality. The state wants women to be seen as capable in downstairs battery. The state to be seen um, the state wants women to be seen as capable and you want to treat them as equals, but you send a contradictory message because it shows value otherwise. Shows value that women can be what with us at the background, can be assisting male characters when they're merely accessorial. On the second level, ladies and gentlemen, the first level is um, a hypocritical message, but the second level is about unintended consequences. Especially on the formative years of children, whose perception of the world and people around them actually is formed by what they see and what their parents do. Especially authorities, even the television form of authority in their life, because it's their constant exposure, right? It's formed. What messages are sent? The message sent until they grow up and how we see their female peers, for example, their classmates, or even their moms, is something that they get from television. If you want a society with children, for example, who grow up to treat women equally, to treat them nicely, to treat them as someone who are independent and not reliant upon them, you must tell them at the early age and 
not around media or media organizations who tell them about their dignity message. So on those two levels, ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand that the vector test proves a value and achieves a value that's desirable for the state. So there's a legitimate extension of state interest. It's merely an extension of why the state regulates the media from the very beginning for the concession of the dangers that it poses. If you can see that there's a danger, if you can see that shows for the values of children, and if you can see that shows can be patriarchal, then you have to tell us why do we why should we regulate them? For all those reasons, ladies and gentlemen, for the problem that we have given, we did not tell us how status quo and actually be able to mitigate that for a problem of folks. Harmful. 
it's harmful because it actively, uh, the active discussions and how we end gender, uh, gender oppression, racism, and gender are being monopolized by the state. Now, you have a state which prescribes what particular strand of feminism or how we're supposed to actually end feminism uh, and uh, forward uh, women's empowerment. And it should be an active discussion of all of these ways. But for the one, yes. Sir, if your first speaker conceded that parents can be a social avenue for formation, even in your best case scenario where there is one strand of feminism in media, there's still other social institutions that can forward different types okay. of feminism. Okay. But have you forgotten that the very media that you're talking about the strongest and has most influence towards the socialization of these particular individuals? Why then do you want you know, like certain state values to monopolize that particular uh, state instrument. But let's move on to the second thing, right? Second, second harm is that it runs the risk of being a state propaganda modeling the feminist agenda or the feminist cause. Have you not forgotten the fact that the media is a fourth estate to watch though? Because it's important for you to recognize that the state has conducted the most human rights abuses and the state is actually the biggest supporters of bigots in the past, ladies and gentlemen, in all those policies against women, ladies and gentlemen. But for me to think that if you have a state which is comprised of lobbying laden politicians, of Democrats, of Republicans, ladies and gentlemen, we think that it's going to model the entire discussion. Because women's rights, for example, of Republicans are completely different from that of Democrats. Democrats believe that abortion is an infection of a, a woman's rights over her body. The Republicans come to definitely disagree with these things. So the question is, who are you going to place within those commissions? For example, if the commission says something that's wrong with the Republicans, therefore you're going to have a different narrative now of women's rights, ladies and gentlemen, members of the JCP. Therefore, all your feminist uh, films or feminist classification will be Republican in nature. What's the problem with this? If we if these specifications are films of feminist movement or feminist shows, they'll be colored by cultural and religious biases. Then what will happen is that you will turn off the viewers. You will think that these films are nothing but actually, uh, but, but actually a dialogue or, or uh, a clash between different Republican conservative values rather than um, as a move forward their particular feminist discourse, ladies and gentlemen. We think that's wrong because we think that feminist discussion has to be completely free from all these political discussions, uh, political uh, politics or dirty politics, which, which has actually turned off the public more. But lastly, it's important for us not to solve the, the problem under the rug. Largely because, yes, it's true, some children are not critical, but some are because of, of parental supervision. But it's important for, for these kids to be able to, uh, to, to be exposed to these things, because they will experience it outside anyway. At least there is a discussion, ladies and gentlemen, once they want to film. That's where they can actually, you know, like, challenge these things even more, compare the situation, bring, if they go to the classroom and they see all of these, uh, they see all of these gender sensitivities, ladies and gentlemen. At least the discussion is already done at home, at least they're already exposed to these things, at least they want to know how we're supposed to address these things, because there's an ongoing debate happening in society already about these particular films. Having said all of those things, I think it's rather clear we should win today's debate. Thank you very much. Bella Weiss. Exactly. That's why if it's a reflection of your society, and given that you're, you 
all our Hillary Clinton and all other empowered women in the society, then it's best, it's for your best interest to make sure that even your children shows that actually touches the grassroots level, that actually molds the perception of your future citizens, should that should also adapt to that kind of reality. That's why when they told us that you know you, we don't show children violence because we, they might imitate it or whatnot, because there's a tangible harm. It's same is true when you talk about gender sensitivity. We must make sure that these children started from that kind of age, since we're already in the reality that hey, we are men and women are already equal. We must make sure that those children will also adapt to that kind of narrative. We must make sure that they won't imitate those things, those movies and TV shows that are stuck to that very wrong narrative that men are more dominated or men are more powerful than women. Secondly, they told us that the intention to harm of media should not be the arbiter of when you can use state power against them. But we told you that, that intent, more than the intention to harm, we must analyze the consequences of showing those shows, the consequences on the perception of their children, and moreover on how they treat other children, how they treat other people, and also how they see themselves in the society. This is something that's very vital that they should engage on our case. Furthermore, they told us that if you are now forward, forwarding the interests of women, or you are now forwarding a single narrative of the feminist movement. Because they told us that there's a vagueness or the relativism of the feminist values. Therefore, they accuse our policy that we will only forward one kind of feminist narratives. Two response. First response, vector test is not really that demanding. That's why we told you we're only talking about equal exposure. Regardless of your strand of feminism, the core value of the strand is still equality, right? So even if, regardless of whatever strand of feminism you're in, it still serves the purpose of equality, which is the core value of every strand of feminism. Second, second response, Curly told us that there are other avenues where it can be passed. You have school, parents, and other other you know, institutions of in the society. So it's also the same with feminism, right? We cannot really introduce one narrative because there are other counter narratives that will you know, come from the school, your peers, and even your families. So we can't really introduce one kind of narrative, just like what they told us, just like what they told us at the end of the day. Furthermore, they even told us that, you know, actually it's the same, same principle because you told us that the state's agenda to forward one narrative feminism coming from the deputy, which is actually the same coming from the first argument of the first speaker of government, opposition side. They told us that the state's agenda now can forward one narrative of feminism. But let's talk about media. We're talking about expression. You don't have a single standard of expression. Even our regular test doesn't really tell you that you have a single standard of expression. We're all, they only tell you that you must have equal exposure and you must make sure that in terms of expression of women, there should be part of the show where women will have dialogue regarding uh, the talks about issues regarding women and that does not just revolve about the issues about men. That's something that's very vital that we've been very, very clear of even coming from the first two speakers. Um, you still have a big logical leap in your case because what is the harm to women that are to children if there are an equal number of females in the movie or if women don't talk there? Would it make female children to have equal number of male and female friends or it will make female children not talk anymore? No. Actually, I will discuss this in my issues, but since Carla pointed it out, I'll discuss it now. When you talk about the harms to children, just like what we told you, it molds the perception of the children. When you talk about children, they are visual learners, and usually they relate themselves to those characters. So if those characters are really disempowered, then the harm is very, very, the harm is very tangible in terms of how you really see yourself in society. If you if you have very powerful men and very disempowered women, then your then your girl the girl or who watches that will see himself will see yourself as disempowered as well. This is something that's very harmful. And also those boys who watch that will see women or will have that perception that women are really inferior to them. That's also something that's very harmful in, in terms of interaction of both men and women. So when you think the sum of all my issues, first of the legitimacy of making Bechdel test a prerequisite for attaining a general battery rating. We told you that state can impose military and regulatory mechanisms. We have media, we have, we have MRCB to make sure that values that are promoted are socially acceptable, especially when we talk about children's shows. It is said, it is said that the highest standard falls under the general battery rating. But even with that idea, the general battery rating still is not sensitive to gender equality. This is why in the presence of like 
political test. We can now make a gender, gender sensitive movies that target children, that shape their perception, that they must be sensitive to their opposite sex. The primary characters of children and their visual learners who usually relieve themselves of these characters. It's not true that there's no tangible, the hard, like violence, because their perception of themselves and their opposite sex is something that we should take into high regard. When you continually show the women that they are always secondary and dependent to men through your general patterning show. You create that culture to children and you can uh, further take that culture as they grow up that they will always, that women will always be inferior and that men will always be more powerful than, than, than men. That's why I discussed to you how media molds perception. That's why even if your argument tells us that hey, you are, you are ruining your just struggling or you're struggling off the truth under the rug. It's not really true because we're only pertaining to move, movies and shows that targets the children, that holds the perception of the children, and that actually tells them that hey, you must make sure that you treat this women, you treat this women fairly, and you must make sure that you see yourself as someone as empowered and not just someone who can be bullied just because the media molded your perception that way. We believe coming from the government side that for us to really have a gender equality, we must target the children, make sure that they adapt to the kind of appreciation, to the kind of appreciation we have in terms of gender equality in status quo. With all that being said, government stands. Thank <laughs> you. 
becomes Agamor is when the hands quickly hurt. So the central of the story is still the man. So the red one is still question at this point in time. Let's go to the first issue. What is in the best interest of children? Carl said that it's a reflection of societal reality. And this is where they said, oh, but you're not defending out your model and it's not responsive to our side. So we have to ask a question to them then. What are the realities for children? When did they watch, what do they think? Because your examples about Phineas and Ferb, they don't watch it as a kid to say, I want to be a masculinist or a postmodern feminist. I just want to see Candice being beaten up or Phineas and Ferb being beaten in the end. Those kinds of things are depoliticized because when you go to the playground, that's what happens as well. In power natures, they're fired. So no matter what they do, one, one gender who will always be an equal well, ladies and gentlemen, and members of this house, as a kid, and this is what we said about oh, flying horses, killing bad people in Power Rangers, whether it's through the blue toy ceratops or the pink pterodactyl, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Opposition wants you to believe, to, to think about the blown up insidious gender bias. That's why Kevin drafted the argument of Marco, which was a home case, by the way, about interaction. I grew up a set to be a set to be a sexist because hell was so ugly and Arnold was oppressed in the story. But the policy is counterproductive as well. The mighty state that should take the battle into its heart is sure. also the most patriarchal institution in today's world. Sure. So you have to answer the question in the red line, what does the policy do? And if they could see, ladies and gentlemen, that they are in the formative years, then they have to argue in relation to other stimuli, how is the Bechdel test in the presence of children so going to be the cause of your side? And third of all, gender neutrality is a big concept. What sure. about homosexuality? If you want to create an absolutely equal world, then the battle is also about homosexuality as well. You are not going to force this thing to create gay characters on your model because that infringes on creative licenses. By extension, this is the same in our model, ladies and gentlemen. Lastly, the response to this is politicizing makes parents, especially the bigoted ones, more protective. And that is a fatal conclusion, a conclusion coming from Alison because she said it's not demanding. All we want are equal exposure. So if the message that you said is so powerful and I'm a bigoted parent or I'm a liberal parent that don't, that actually that does not want my child to look at Phineas and Ferb because there are undertones of sexism, then the other values that Phineas and Ferb, like friendship, loyalty, and sincerity, are already invisible under your side. That's what kids miss under your model. Defend that. If you agree with the harm, for example, of great playing out of politics, and you agree that status quo isn't working, what's your solution? You still haven't given us anything at the end of the day. It's not our burden to say that we to, to argue to create a solution. First of all, we've never argued that the status quo isn't working. We already said that from Carl and Vic that this is a natural progression of humanity. The conclusion of the first argument is that the best way for children to grow is to accept reality and in this model we think the greater to be happen on our side. Under their model, Jill Ginger family, the biggest manifestation of a modernist teenager feminist okay. is gonna be bad because her life is about Darren, Missy, no. and all of these struggles, no. ladies and gentlemen. But let's go to the second issue, the greater interest of the feminist movement. We talked about two things, gender equality and that the feminist movement is about multiplicity and that there's no strand of feminism that is equal and that is higher than the other. They never tied it back to the mental test. So when we were challenging them, in greater societies where they miss it up, it's not going to be shown or at least you will, uh, you will uh, discourage people from looking at it or gravity or silver linings are not going to be shown anymore. We think that in the grown-up world, where the debate is about, patriarchy is both obvious and insidious. That's coming from Carlo. So, if the Bechdel test, even with, uh, even in instances where the Bechdel test is failing, we combat them in the open because the mass media is combating that. And as a self-regulating institution, other forms of media will pick that up as well. But second of all, if you assume the best case coming from, from their side, the classification is the greatest turn off for people, the moderates won't watch it or support it anymore. But some markets will still watch it, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the danger because the only narrative that they will see is a narrative of sexism, of a narrative of a controlled media. And it's even dangerous if the state controls the narrative because the women's representation under their model is not only under one's lens. That's why the argument of it was about all movements Right, because of multiple representations and multiple characterizations. We agree, women are not supposed to be in the back seat. But if your only characterization for them is to be there half of the time, dressed in a certain way so that you can have the illusory empowerment that you have, 
We think that's not even good for women, and in this instance, we take this decision. Thank you. <laughs>
here was when they clarified that their case is about organic change and how status quo can change itself. Because you have actors that counteract the media like the school and the family, right? But this is what they tolerate. They tolerate the media sending a contradictory message because it can be contradicted by other institutions. But they do not understand the heart of contradicting messages being sent from multiple institutions and children having that conflict and an idea of what really to believe in. Should I believe the media or should I believe the school that's teaching me otherwise? Why shouldn't we just send a consistent message that's coming from our policy to children? A consistent message that women are not secondary, a consistent message that women are not accessories, and they can also play central characters, especially in plots of adventure, in plots of romance. But because of that policy, it's not just about regulating content and banning those who do not actually conform to that content. First of all, it's a classification policy, but more importantly, it's a policy about minimum requirements, which was clear from Marco. We're not going to declassify your gender and rating just because you have one content of romance. The vector list is very clear. You can have romance, but you also have to have other contents that concern women, that talks about concerns of women, and other things that is not just about romance and their male characters, so we have in Wikipedia or any other social site that you can source your information from, right? They're against status quo, but how can status quo be corrected? We're just telling us that there are other institutions yeah, that yeah. check the media, while at the same time conceding that the most powerful among those institutions from the second to last speaker is the media in itself. Yeah, yeah. So how do you actually do something about that? The debate, and this is another mistake coming from the opposition, the debate is not whether or not the state can actually regulate media. Because coming from us, preempted already that it can regulate media, the question is what is the legitimate extent? So the issue coming from the last speaker about whether or not the speech should regulate it at all, because it's like freedom of expression, is moot and irrelevant at the It's a discussion of what's legitimate, right? If you have already proven the parallel that genders Gen non gender neutrality and sexism are harmful to our children because they actually tell the children that your identities as women are secondary to men and you have thoughts about yourself and make male um, children actually see their female counterparts as less and less capable. Then it's actually a harm because it transcends into what all good. That's actually characterization is from my speech. So we don't understand the reply. They told us that we haven't portrayed the harm. The harm was very, very here. So they're going to lose on two standards. First is the principle, second is the pragmatic. On the principle level, they haven't engaged us on why we cannot achieve gender sensitivity here. So the debate is not about a clash of feminist ideals. The only thing that the feminist movement stands for is women to be seen equally and women to be seen as capable. We did not tell you that there's going to be a clash between socialist feminists or liberal feminists here. Even as told by Ginger tells you, in court case, the, the multiple types of women who are there. You have Dodi, you have Ginger, you have Macy, right? Who are different women in themselves. Gender sensitivity would require a very influential platform to adhere to conform to these values. And the only way you do that is through the media. And for example, Quran and Rosen tells, they told us, it's an example of how status quo is already self-correcting in itself. We tell you that if status quo is self-correcting, then why aren't the lines closing in the the norm, right? There are exceptions to the rule because they have been successful because people are marketing, because of good storyline, and people are saying their stories. But what about others? Movies, which are still gaining the mainstream attraction and the gaining the mainstream approval of the audience. But also, on the part of state authority, they haven't told us any rebuttal on why is this a legitimate expansion of state authority at all. Weird ideas coming from them is very, very pragmatic. They told us that ratings are powerless. We told you that ratings are very powerful. You cannot bring children alone into a movie if it's SPG or PG. You have to have a parent, right? But especially in television, children, parents are very, very wary of their children's habits, their children's values. This spirit children from watching shows that are PG or all the prime time, right? So it has an effect on parents. Maybe for some parents it doesn't. It does have an effect. But they tell us that the children are not really the stakeholders in this debate, but are but it should be the adults. We tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that adults, if you consider that they are stakeholder, already have fixed values. But we talk about children, their values are still very, very shapeable, coming from the constructive speakers, even the way. So in this case, the ones should be part of them are the ones who can be molded and can be shaped on an ideal um, citizen of this country or for anybody that matter. So for all those reasons, ladies and gentlemen, for values and engage and for principles which they haven't even clashed on and not telling us what's their solution to status quo, we are very, very proud of them today. Right. 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 Right.